good evening Let's wait for the students to join in and then we'll start off with our lecture. Today is the sixth day for our free marathon series on Botany Insider and today we'll be discussing about the microscopy topic. Okay. So today is the second last day. Tomorrow we'll be concluding our marathon. Let's wait for the students to join then we'll start off with the class. Yes, please confirm whether the audio and the visuals are clear to you, yes or no, in the chat sections everyone. Yes, please confirm whether everything is fine, audio, video, please let me know. Okay, so let's start off with our class. Today is the sixth class and we are going to discuss the topic of microscopy. It is one of the topic from unit number 13 if you all have seen the syllabus of CSIR and this particular topic is repeated like in various other exams. In addition to CSIR it is also important topic for DBT, for GATE, ICAR etc. So it is a very important topic to understand. Before that, we are starting off with a new course on Botany Insider on 11th of December. If you wish to enroll in the same, kindly enroll. The You can download our application and enroll in this particular course. Good evening, Sambhavi. Okay. In this, we will be discussing every single thing, every single topic related to the CSIR UGC net upcoming examination for the December 2022 examination. In addition, if you haven't yet downloaded our application, please download our application. It is available both on the Apple and the Android mobile phones. These are the various contents that we have on our app. We have PYQ pointers, we have the notes booklet, a course is running for the general aptitude series. In addition, we also have various upcoming courses. So make sure that you get these contents for your preparation. Let's talk about our topic now. So the topic for today is microscopy. So it is one of the topic which we have been studying since our classes like 8th, 9th, right? So we have been studying about this particular topic time and again. But what is the difference that we have to make during the CSIR? Good evening, Mansi. So, what is microscopy at the first go? See, microscopy simply means, just a second, yeah. What is microscopy all about? In simple words, we can say that those content, those substances or those molecules that we are not able to look via our naked eyes, these microscopes, the, uh, what do we say? process of microscopy is helping us in what it is actually helping us to observe these contents to observe these macromolecules or in addition we can say to study these right so what is microscopy it is a technical field that involves the use of the microscopial components such as the microscopes or the microscope objectives what it is used for in order to attain the details of the examined 
sample that means when you have a sample in front of you so how is this sample like what are the various characteristics of the sample or we can say what are the various main features of that sample which we cannot observe via our naked eyes this is what we study in microscopy okay so what is a microscope because the microscopy is a field and what is a microscope so microscope is a high precision optical instrument microscopy is the study and microscope is the main process or it is the main instrument that is getting used in order to perform this particular function okay so what is it it is a high precision optical instrument that uses a lens or a combination of lenses depending upon whether it is a simple microscope or it is a compound microscope what it is used for for producing highly magnified images of the small specimens or the objects which are too small or the ones which cannot be seen by the help of naked eyes or we can say unaided eyes or in simple words which cannot be observed in the nature in a normal eyesight ratio but when we observe it by our microscope we can easily observe and get to understand okay now there are various terms to microscopy there are various uh, what do we say important things that we need to understand for the topics the very first one is magnification because we'll be or when you'll see this csir questions or any other exams question you'll see that these terms are repeated time and again so what is magnification magnification simply means that what is the amount or what is the degree via which a specific object is getting enlarged for example let's say the initially the object was of this size but because of microscopy you are able to observe it to this particular size so from here to here this is what magnification is every microscope every type of microscope that we have they have different magnifications property or there are different ranges via which a specific microscope could enlarge the object so that is what is known as magnification so what is it it refers to the amount or the degree of visual enlargement of an observed objects the total magnification is calculated by what it is calculated by the magnifying power of the objective lens to that of the eyepiece what does this mean so if you wish to calculate the magnifying power of a specific microscope what do we require we require first there are two main lenses in the microscope structure one is the objective lens and the second one is the eyepiece lens okay so by multiplying the magnification of the objective lens and the eyepiece lens you are able to get the final magnification or the total magnification of the this particular lens that is the main microscope that we are looking forward for this microscope's magnification power you need to have the magnifying power of the objective lens and of the eyepiece lens okay this is what is written over here so this is the where uh, various other things given to you for example this the eyepiece magnification let's say is 10x and objective magnification is uh, multiplied by 4 so overall magnification would be just multiply the two and you'll get the answer of overall magnification of the microscope in the same manner these are the examples given in front of you for you to get a better idea next we have that what is resolving power resolving power means let's say you have this specimen and in that specimen there are two small dots which need to be analyzed which need to be examined okay so what is 
resolving power resolving power means that by what property or by what power is a microscope able to differentiate between the two points that are present very very close to each other what is the difference between magnification and resolving power magnification simply means that you have this point to what extent is this point getting enlarged this is what magnification is resolving power is that when you have point a and point b in close proximity to each other so by or how accurately is the microscope able to differentiate between the two points in the final image which would be shown by it onto the lens okay this is what resolving power is i hope you have understood the difference between magnification and resolving power because it is one of the most common confusion that students have so i hope this particular point is clear is there any doubt till now yes or no please let me know yes any doubt till now doubts quickly other students is there any doubt mansi sambhavi others please be interactive in the class okay very good let's move forward now so this was about the resolving power now what is it it is the resolve it is the ability to differentiate between two uh, two points as separate one then there are some practical resolution that is these are the resolutions given for the human eye light microscope and electron microscope so if you wish just go through it once and that's enough then we have the third point or the third main thing that is the limit of resolution so what do you mean by limit of resolution so it means the minimum distance between the two points to identify them separately now over here we have the third thing that is the limit of resolution which means that what is the minimum distance that a microscope requires so that it can differentiate between the two types of or the two closely located points there is a huge difference between resolving power and limit of resolution resolving power is that how much or by what clarity is it able to differentiate and limit of resolution is that what is the minimum distance that a microscope requires for it to identify them as a different product or for it to identify them as a separate points so it is calculated by this particular equation what is the equation all about equation is that uh, limit of resolution is denoted by d so d is equal to 0.61 lambda upon na na refers to the numerical aperture and lambda refers to the wavelength of the illuminated light so make sure you remember about this because in december 2019 direct question was asked based upon this equation so remember about this in addition to that remember one more thing that there is direct relationship between the limit of resolution and the wavelength so as the limit of uh, wavelength of a specific light increases the limit of resolution also increases because you can see there is a direct relation okay next is na that is the numerical aperture what is numerical aperture so numerical aperture actually it defines the main characteristics of the objective lens it is equal to n psi alpha so 
d is equal to what d is equal to what did we have just studied it is equal to 0.1 let me just write it down here itself so what is d yeah what is d d is equal to 0.61 lambda upon numerical aperture now what is this numerical aperture numerical aperture is equal to n psi alpha so uh, n sin alpha so d is equal to what 0.61 lambda upon n alpha okay so this is what the complete formula of limit of resolution is all about now what is n n is equal to the refractive index of the medium between the specimen and the objective lens and what is alpha alpha is the half the angle at which the light enters into the objective lens very very important lambda is lambda is what lambda is the wavelength n is the refractive index alpha is the half the angle by which the light enters into the objective lens so one more important correlation that lesser is the limit of resolution more is the resolving power of the microscope so please remember about this particular relation that is the resolving power is inversely proportional to limit of resolution if the resolving power increase limit of resolution would decrease and if the resolving power would increase limit of resolution would decrease please please remember about this because questions get framed related to this particular point okay now see this is what we have just understood it is written over here for you to make the notes as well so what are the various factors affecting the limit of resolution and finally the main resolution first is the wavelength so light that is used to illuminate the specimen should be of lower wavelength so lesser wavelength would lead to lesser limit of resolution and more resolving power so a good microscope is the one which have better resolving power so we require lesser wavelength of the light getting illuminated next is the refractive index so it is the measure of what it is the measure of the change in the velocity of the light as it passes from one medium to other so let's say this is medium 1 and medium 2 so what is the change of velocity if a light enters from year to year so how does it change this is what the refractive index is remember that air and vacuum have the refractive index 1 oil and immersion they have a greater reflective uh, refractive index so more is the refractive index better would be the resolving power and lesser would be the limit of resolution so these all are correlations between them please please remember about these they are very very important and in all the exams be it csi or be it any other exam you will be able to get these type of questions okay third one we have the angular aperture so the alpha is the angular aperture what does this mean so it changes as soon as the objective of the lens taken near to the specimen so when you take the specimen when you take the main knob of the microscope towards the specimen the angular aperture changes so angular aperture for the best objective lenses is approximate 70 degree so remember this question could be asked in dbt that is the maximum value for the sin alpha is about 0.94 and then we have greater the angular aperture lesser would be the limit of resolution more would be the resolving power all of these correlations are very very important please please remember about them you can make a note of these in your notebooks as well it would help you out okay so this was about it now if there's any doubt till here you can ask otherwise we'll start off with our next topic we'll understand about each of the microscopes in
clear everyone? Any doubt? Okay, very good. Let us move forward with the basics of microscope. So, talking about the basics of microscope, what is a microscope all about? So, it is a single lens. A microscope having a single lens is the one which is known as the simple microscope. So, we majorly have two types. If the lens is one, then we call it as a simple microscope. And if there are two lenses or more than two lenses, we call it as a compound microscope. Okay. So, in this, in order to enlarge an image, a single light path passes through a series of the lenses in a line where each lens magnifies the image over the previous one. That means, let me just make it for you. So, let us say this is 1, this is 2 and this is the main path of our microscope. Just imagine it that way. Okay, And let us say over here we have the specimen. So, as and when the light uh, falls over the mirror that we have, light would be passing from here. So, as and when the light passes through the various lenses, there would be an image formed. And every successive lens would be enlarging the image and the final lens would help us to understand, would help us to examine the main characteristics, the main features of the specimen that we are observing. Okay, There are basically two types of lenses. First one is or in any standard uh, microscope that we have, there are two lenses. First one is the objective lens and the second one is the eyepiece lens. So, what is the objective lens? So, the ob lens which is closest to the specimen and eyepiece is the one that is closest to the observer. So, when you look into a microscope, in a microscope, what do we see? This is how a microscope actually looks like. So, the lens over here is given the name of eyepiece and the lens over here is given the name of objective. Please remember about this. Then there are other parts of the mi eye microscope as well. First one, we have the diopter ad adjustment. So, what it is used for? It is useful as a means to change the focus of one eyepiece so as to correct uh, for the differences in the vision for your two eyes because every single person have different eyesight. So, for every person to change and understand the main focus area, this diopter adjustment is there. Then we have body tube, arm coarse adjustment, fine adjustment, nose piece. You all must have used a microscope because you all are preparing for a specific competitive exam. So, you all must be knowing about the various parts of the microscope. Okay, This is very, very basic. I do not think a master's or a graduate student need to Okay, So, we have a stage we have stage height adjustment, aperture, illumination, diaphragm, condenser, base. You can just go through these points. Nothing much to explain in this. It is very, very simple. Okay. Now, the main concept is related to the types. The, this is something very, very important. That is the various types of microscopy. First one is the optical or light microscopy in which we have bright field, dark field, confocal, phase contrast and fluorescence. Then we have electron microscopy in which we have TEM and SEM. Last one is the scanning probe microscopy which is the atomic force microscopy. Okay, Each and every one of them like the bright field microscopy. So, bright field microscopy is the one in which the field is bright and the specimen that we are going to observe is dull in color. Then we have the dark field in which the complete specimen is dark and we will be observing the specimen which would look very very bright onto the field. 
then we have confocal phase contrast fluorescence let's understand about each one of them in a, in detail first one is the bright field microscopy so what is bright field microscopy the one that produces a dark image against a brighter background remember about this the word itself says it bright field that means the background is what the background is the one which is darker uh, the background is the one which is bright in color and then you have a darker image second one is the bright field microscopy uses what it uses the light from the lamp source to illuminate the specimen the this light is gathered in the condenser and then it is shaped into a cone where the apex is focused on the plane of the specimen now over here what are majorly used methyl blue is used to stain the cell nuclei then we have the gram stain that is used for the bacteria then we have fucine that is used to stain the smooth muscle cells these questions are asked in dbt and also in the gate exams so please make sure that you remember about each one of them talking about the application of bright field so they are used to mainly observe the simple to use with fewer adjustment and then the live pigmented cells could be easily seen so please remember about this thing disadvantages that in this staining may introduce extra venous details that are not needed okay so this is about the bright field microscopy then in addition to that we have various other features then we have the dark field microscopy again the word itself suggests the same the field is dark that is let's say that this field is completely black in color on to that you have a bright image let's say this is the bright image that gets formed on the field so dark field microscopy it removes the unscattered beam from the image only light that has been reflected or refracted by the specimen forms the image okay so this is accomplished through the use of an annular aperture that will produce a hollow cone of light that does not enter the objective lenses applications of dark field microscopy are first one is it is used to observe living unstained samples very very important it is used to get more details of the external features like the outline boundaries very very important you can get a four marker as well from this particular point that which of the following could be used for the finding out the outlines of the boundaries so it is the dark field not in this straight manner but yeah in case of like a case study or something disadvantages that it is very very sensitive to dust particles okay so if you look into the ray diagrams for the light and the dark field microscope so this is how the main thing occurs you have the light which gets illuminated upwards you have condens condenser lens then you have the specimen then you have objective and the ocular lens in the same manner the opposite one so this is about it so you can see this is how the light and the dark light field and the dark field actually looks like so in the light field you can see the field is light and the specimen is dark and in the other case the field is dark and the specimen is light okay is there any network issue or something no okay so i hope this thing is clear this is how light field and the dark field microscopy actually looks like then the third one we have is just a second. yeah so the third one that we have it is the phase contrast microscopy so what it is based upon it is based upon the principle that small phase changes occurs in the light rays as soon as they pass it through the specimen these phases changes are produced via the differences in the thickness and the refractive index so because you are observing or you are examining as a specific specimen right so it must be having different thickness different uh, what do you say phases so this 
change of phases is what is actually observed in the phase contrast microscopy the black and white image is formed in this again important point application for the same is first it is used to observe live cells bacterial components such as endospores inclusion bodies second the transparent cells can be observed without staining them again very very important please remember about the application of each one of them time and again questions are framed from this area okay this is how the face contrast microscopy ray diagram actually looks like you have the annular stop which occurs via the objective lens and finally the image plane is formed dark image with a bright background results so i hope this particular thing is clear to you is everything clear to everyone is there any doubt yes any doubt anyone yes okay then we have the fluorescence microscopy so what is fluorescence microscopy so the microscopy in which we are actually using some kind of fluorochromes or some kind of fluorophores which would be helping us to find out the or which would be helping us to get the final image formed okay so it works in principle that many substances absorb light of a particular wavelength and energy and it eliminates it and it emits a light of longer wavelength and lesser energy in this what is actually happening the specimen is exposed to a higher energy short wavelength that is ultraviolet violet or the blue light in order to excite the electrons within the certain molecules inside the specimen so over here what we are actually doing we are working on the specimen characteristic so we are actually using a specific wavelength of light in order to excite the electrons and as and when the electrons jumps from a ground state to a excited state they would be illuminating a specific wavelength of light and that wavelength of light is the one that is captured by our microscope and the final image is shown for example dapi fluorochrome is used it is used for observing the dna it is one of the previous year question point which you can remember that dapi fluorochrome that is 46 diiodine 2 phenyl indole is used to observe the dna okay please remember about this applications are first one is imaging the structural components of the cell imaging the genetic material within a cell and the rna like the dna and the rna let me write it down it is also it can also be used to study the movement of the cell using gfp gleam fluorescence microscopy so over here please remember it was asked in the previous years it could be asked in the further years as well please please remember about each of the thing that is given to you over here these slides are made with utmost care so that you get the best content over here so make sure that you are utilizing this this source and you are not skipping out any single point given to you okay then we have the electron microscopy so what is electron microscopy so it is the one that uses electrons in order to create the image of the target it is much high, it is of much higher magnification or the resolving power than a electron micro than a normal microscope so this is how the main electron microscope looks like it's a very very big machine like i have seen all of these like sem them all of these kind of machines i have seen with like in reality in the rooms in the college so these are like complete room you can imagine these microscopes are so big and they are of such a big like what do we say a very big facility is there which 
have it in which we have the complete machine we'll be having a computer we'll be having a specific person right there who would be operating it so it is very very big machines and also they provide us with the best of facility that electrons are using are used up in order to get the image okay so this was about it in electron microscopy we have the transmission and the scanning so transmission is used for what it is to visualize the 2d image and ultra thin sectioning is done using a ultra monotone so what is an ultra monotone it is a kind of a knife that is used in order to break open the lens or to break open the cell because we have to get the 2d image and we need to like study the complete section so we need to open up the cell for that ultra microtone is used next we have sem that is scanning electron microscope it is used to produce 3d image all these things have been asked in the previous years so do not think that you you can skip this ne please don't skip these things they are very very important so they are used to obtain the information about the surface topography and the composition of any specimen again important and asked in the previous years remember about it third important application is in this a primary beam of electrons are strike onto the specimen and further the secondary electrons are liberated from specimen and that is finally captured by the detector and it is shown onto the monitor that we have on our that is the main connection via which we'll be getting the main results of the uh, complete process okay this is how the scanning electron microscopy actually works so these were the main important points related to the microscopy i hope every single thing is clear to you if there's any doubt any point you did not understand you can ask me otherwise we are done with the topic of microscopy it is very very important and i have tried to make it as simple as possible for you all okay so if there is any doubt any point you didn't understand please ask yes any doubt sem again okay sem stands for scanning electron microscopy so in scanning electron microscopy what actually happens you have you have a specimen onto this specimen the electrons are projected and these are the primary electrons and with these primary electrons as in when they strike the specimen there would be secondary electrons that strikes and moves back right and these secondary electrons are captured by the detectors and these detectors would be showing the final image onto the computer screen where you'll get to understand like what is the main surface topography or the composition of the specimen that you were like examining or you were trying to understand okay so is it clear to you now farheen is your doubt clear So this was about for today's session we are starting off with a crash course on 11th if you wish to enroll you can enroll in that okay so the way we explain here in the same manner in a structured manner the complete course would be completed over there so if you wish to enroll you can enroll it in that particular course it starts on 11th in addition we also have a course running for the general aptitude if you wish to enroll in the general aptitude course and you feel like that you have any difficulty with the maths so that course would help you out enroll in that it is of very minimal price like it would help you out for sure we have a lot of students there so join in there you'll be able to like have a group of studies uh, study companion and you'll be able to perform better okay 
so thank you for joining in let's meet tomorrow tomorrow we'll be concluding our seven day marathon okay so i hope this particular marathon helped you out if yes and if the students feel like we can start off with a new marathon as well but it depends upon the students response then only we'll think about it otherwise let's see we are getting a lot of request for other courses as well so we are going to start many more courses very very soon wait for those courses also please do not forget to like share and subscribe to botany insider we are about to reach 10000 subscribers let's reach in this particular month itself so help us reach 10000 as soon as possible thank you for joining in bye everyone take care